just attended this morning, we'll invite you to take your Bibles with us this morning. And go over to the book of Exodus, chapter number 15. The book of Exodus, chapter number 15, and going down to verse number 22. Lord willing, this morning I'd like to bring the message to you that God has impressed upon my heart strongly as we study God's Word and search His will for the day's message. And hope it will be an encouragement to you here in Exodus chapter 15, verse 22. When you find your place, you may stand in honor of reading of God's Word. The Bible's going to say here in verse number 22 of Exodus chapter 15, so Moses brought Israel from the Red Sea and went, and they went out unto the wilderness of Shur. And they went three days in the wilderness and found no water. When they had came to Marah, they could not drink for the water of Marah, for they were bitter. Therefore, the name of it was called Marah. And the people murmured against Moses, saying, What shall we drink? And he cried unto the Lord, and the Lord showed him a tree, which when he had cut it, uh, cast it into the water, the waters were made sweet. There he made for them a statue uh, of the ordinance, of an ordinance, and there he proved them, and said, If thou wilt diligently hark to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes. I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians. For I am the Lord that healeth thee. Let us pray, Father. My prayer is now that you'd have your blessings upon the reading of the word. Pray, my God, that you'd have your blessings upon this message. And Lord, that you'd touch the hearts and the lives of each one that is here. I pray, God, that thy will would be done. And Lord, we'd be careful to give you praise, honor, and glory for these things we ask in thy name. Amen and amen. Thank you. you may be seated. This morning, as we look into the scripture, I say, I want to bring the message entitled Bitter Waters. Bitter Waters. We understand, according to the story, in which we have in our text this morning, that our story takes place during the time of Israel's departure from Egypt, being led by God's man Moses into a wilderness. We understand that this was a God-driven thing, a God-willed thing in the lives of God's people. We see that they were fleeing from captivity, escaping from some bitter waters of their lives. So many today, I believe, are trying to flee from the captivity of some sinful past in their life. No doubt they have tasted of some bitter waters in their life. Things that have taken place, things that have happened. And now we see many people today are being fleeing from that. God's man is trying to help, but the question is, are they listening? There's preachers all over our land that are preaching the word of God, that are being honest and truthful from God's word, that is trying to help God's people along the way, trying to show people what they must do in order to have peace in their hearts and have the healing touch of God in their lives. No doubt I said they have tasted some bitter water in their life, but God is promising you freedom if you are willing to follow him. I can imagine this morning uh, the situation that our uh, that God's people were in whenever they were being led out of Egypt and across the Red Sea. They had done seen the great hand of God doing a miracle when he parted the Red Sea and they all passed over on dry land. And it just so happened as God sent them into the wilderness of shore. And that word shore, I'm thinking about as we would think of the use the word shore in our own lives thinking that things are, are guaranteed, that things are uh, for sure. And, and so I can see uh, them thinking, no doubt, man, we've got this behind us now. We're starting to go into a new land. We're starting in a new chapter of our life. 
God's going to take care of it. And the very first thing that takes place is when they get to the place of Mara, that there is water that they have not received water for three days uh, as they were traveling on this journey in their lives. Uh, and no doubt they started complaining. And uh, the Bible says they murmured against Moses, which meaning they were complaining. Uh, and they are, no doubt they're thinking here, we have fled this captivity. We have seen the working hand of God. And now we're three days without water. And we come to a place of water. But yet we cannot drink of this water because it is bitter. I ask you this morning. Have you ever been in a place in your life uh, where you may have tasted the bitter waters of life uh, when things may not go as you think that they should? Or maybe you have encountered things in your life. Uh, it could be sickness. It could be financial situation. It could simply be a problem in the family. These bitter waters have maybe no doubt caused bitterness in your own life. I'm here to tell you this morning. Thank be unto God that we serve a great God that is able and that is capable of healing these things and taking care of these things. I said we see that this is directed by God. Can I say that many a times when things happen in our lives, it is a God sent thing. God directs things in our lives and sometimes he does allow the bitter waters to come so that we will learn to trust upon him uh, instead of us complaining and grumbling as they did that they look unto God's man they look unto God's lead uh, leading and let God take care of it I'm sure that they thought uh, that this was a problem uh, and their problems were behind them uh, but only to find that this was set before them now folks I'm here to tell you in the Christian life when someone accepts Christ uh, hey listen folks just because you start a new journey in life Life does not mean uh, that all the waters are going to be sweet. Uh, there's going to be some bitter times in your life, uh, and God can take care of those things. Uh, so we see here that they that they were putting uh, put be putting into a situation when they find this bitter water. I believe that God begins lesson number one in their Christian journey. If you're going to follow God, uh, God sets these lessons before you so that you may learn these lessons. So that you may know uh, what to do with the situation. Uh, and that is the, that these bitter waters uh, uh, cannot satisfy your soul. Uh, the bitter waters of lust uh, will not satisfy the soul uh, of a Christian. The bitter waters of pride uh, will not satisfy the soul uh, of a Christian. The bitter waters of anger will not satisfy the souls uh, of a Christian. Oh, I understand uh, that things have happened in the past uh, and things have been said uh, or things not said uh, that can cause a hurt feeling uh, and can, can cause the anger to come up in your life. Uh, folks, that is a bitter water that's in your life. Uh, you don't have to be satisfied with that, nor do you have to drink of that. Uh, it's strange how some people choose to, to continue drinking of that bitter water of anger. Let God take care of that in your life uh, and I'll guarantee you God will give you the peace. Uh, the bitter waters of drunkenness uh, and the bitter water of, uh, of sexual impurity never satisfies uh, the soul. I say it never satisfies the thirsty soul of a Christian. There's more uh, that the Christian can, need, uh, can use. Uh, I think about what Jesus said uh, over in the, the book of John uh, in chapter number 4 and verse number 13. If I can find it, uh, I just want to read this to you for just a moment. Uh, and, 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 and that's a John. Uh, hold on just a minute. I don't have it marked. It just came to mind. In chapter number 4 and down at verse number 13, uh, the Bible tells us here, and Jesus said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. Talking about the water of the world. Uh, he said, But whosoever drinketh the water that I shall give him uh, shall never what? Uh, thirst again. Uh, he said, But the water that I shall give him uh, shall be uh, into him a well of water springing up uh, unto everlasting life. Uh, I'm here to tell you that God has given us a promise uh, that if we drink of the water uh, of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, uh, then we don't have to drink of the waters uh, of this world that never satisfies us. Uh, the soul. 
we see that God instruct Moses uh, to cut down a tree, amen, uh, and to cast it into the bitter water. Uh, can I say that we don't know what kind of tree it was? Uh, he, hey, listen, God didn't tell us what it was. Uh, I'm pretty sure that if man knew what tree it was, uh, and if they chose to mention that tree, that that tree no doubt would become sacred. Uh, and folks, God does not want us making an image uh, of tree, of wood, uh, of clay, of potter. He does not want us making an image of silver or of gold uh, or anything else of that kind. Uh, our eyes are to be directed toward him. Uh, and folks, so many times uh, people get this thought in their mind, uh, oh, if I just knew uh, what kind of tree it was and had that tree, uh, it would take away all the bitterness of my life. But yet, uh, can I say it could simply be a comparison to another tree, a tree that was cut down one day and made into an old rugged cross. Uh, so our Lord and Savior went and hung on that tree. Uh, and folks, that tree, the one that was on that tree, will take away the bitter waters in your life uh, and take away all the bitterness uh, that may be in your heart today. Uh, I believe it's a comparison. Uh, and we can look up on that tree uh, as same as it was when Moses uh, was with the children of Israel. Uh, and the Bible tells us the story Story, uh, of when they were being bitten by an old serpent uh, and the, uh, God gave Moses a clue uh, and had him to make an a, 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 a image of a serpent uh, and put it on a pole uh, and hold it up high where all man could see uh, and as man looked upon the serpent upon that pole uh, and as long as they looked at it they were, they were protected and they were healed it's the same sign that God gives throughout the word if we keep our eyes on the old rugged cross uh, if we keep our her eyes on the one that was on the cross. Uh, thank be unto God we can be healed. Uh, thank be unto God the bitter waters of life will pass before us uh, and become sweet uh, in our mouths. The waters became sweet uh, and drinkable. And that's what Jesus Christ uh, can do for you today uh, in our lives. Uh, oh, I understand that many people have a bitter experience uh, must come to God, uh, 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 must come to, uh, to God's people sometimes. Uh, listen, in 1 John, uh, or excuse me, St. John 16, 33, uh, the Bible says uh, there are things, uh, it says these things have I spoken unto you, uh, that in me ye might have peace. Uh, in the world uh, ye shall have tribulation, uh, but be of good cheer. Uh, I have overcome the world. Uh, in other words, he's saying uh, you may have to endure uh, some tri tribulation. Uh, you may have to go through some things. Uh, and yes, you may come taste the bitter water. Uh, but I, uh, I have overcome the world. Uh, I have come over overcome the troubles. Uh, I have overcome the bitter waters. Uh, he said, be of good cheer. Oh, I said before, never could understand when Apostle Paul, he made the statement that I glory in my tribulations, I draw glory in my troubles. I thought, my, my, if we could ever get the faith uh, and get to the point in life uh, where we can say, listen, let these things come. Uh, let the troublesome waters come. Uh, let the bitter waters come. Uh, it's all right. God's going to take care of it. If we could ever get to there in our faith, uh, how much of a better Christian we could be. I mean, 2 Corinthians 1, 4 says, uh, who comforts us in all tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort within we and ourselves care are comforted of God. See, God sometimes says, uh, you need to go through this. Uh, you need to experience this. Uh, you need to have a taste of the bitter water because there could be a brother and sister that may be tasting bitter waters in their life. Uh, and you can go to them by the experience uh, and be a blessing to them and help them through it. That's why God encourages us to pray when our brothers and sisters uh, are going through some hard times. Uh, that's why we must never forget that when one of our loved ones in the church, hear me out now, that's going through a situation 
whether it be of a sickness, uh, whether it be of some situation, uh, whether it's a family situation, uh, oh, how we must pray for them. Uh, they're tasting the bitter waters of life right now, and they need help uh, from those who've tasted it before, who's went through it before. Uh, if you've ever went through divorce, uh, and God's helped you through it, uh, and God's brought you out of it, uh, and God's given you a good soulmate, uh, and God's good, God, she got things worked out in your life. Uh, oh, how you can be an encouragement uh, when someone else is facing those bitter waters uh, that you can tell them, listen, I know you don't understand, but there's a better day of coming if you put your trust in God and you put your faith in the Lord uh, and you get faithful to God. Uh, oh, you just never know. Uh, one of those of you that may have had cancer that has went through the chemos and the radiation, uh, that's had to go through operations, uh, and oh, you've tasted the bitter waters of that sickness uh, and of that disease. Uh, when you know of someone else that's going through it, uh, what a blessing you can be to that person's life. Uh, when you go to them and tell them, listen, I've been there. I understand what you're going through. Just keep putting your faith and trust in God. He'll take care of you, amen. He'll help you through it, amen. He'll give you the strength you need. Oh, listen, I'm telling you, sometimes God allows those bitter waters to come. First Thessalonians tells us that it is a righteous thing with God to recompense tribulation. It is a righteous thing. You know, I believe sometimes God in his sense of humor will say, you know what, I think I'm just going to let this one go through something just so I can prove myself to them. Just so I can say, look, look at what I can do. Look what I am, what, what I can take care of just to put a little bit more faith in our hearts and lives. We, we pray God give me faith, but we never want to go through anything to increase that faith. You ever notice that? We say, God, show me your will, but don't let me go through anything that I have to find your will. We'd rather for God to pave it out uh, and put the lines down so we can easily see. Maybe put some of those reflectors at night where we can see it plain and clear and say, this is the way without a doubt in my mind. But sometimes God puts you on an old mountain road uh, when you can't see the lines, uh, when you can't see the road, uh, and you have to step out on faith and say, I'm going to go anyway. I told you a while back in the summer, my wife and I was coming back from Johnson City. We was coming around the road, and we was coming out 19E and got, our, got in that section. There's no street lights anywhere to be found. Nobody had their lights on in their house, uh, and I killed the lights on the car for just a split second, and it was total blackness, total bl darkness. Uh, and my wife, she took a big, deep breath. She said, turn the lights back on. She said, that's scary. Uh, and I said, you know, sometimes life's like that. God said, I'm going to turn the light off just for a second so you'll get your eyes focused where you need them. Yeah. Amen. Listen, church, you ain't the only one that's ever tasted bitter, bitter waters. Uh-huh. I want you to see here this morning, there's, there's a healing in these bitter, bitter waters. Amen. It's a normal thing that God wants to heal, especially when he's asked in the right manner. Notice if you would, I better get back over to my text. Amen. Notice, if you would, the last verse in which I read. Down at verse number 26. Now, just because I'm there doesn't mean I'm done preaching. Amen. But notice what it says here in verse number 26, if you would. The Bible says here that if thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God. If you want that divine healing, if you want the taste of that bitter water removed, if you want to be able to have this taste of the sweetness of God's love in your life and, and in your heart, then you must hearken diligently. In other words, you need to you need to diligently hearken unto the voice of the Lord that God. Oh, little thy God. Listen, God has given us the whole entire King James Version of the word of God called the Bible, amen, to look upon, to read, to study, and to apply in our lives so that whenever the bitter waters come, that we can hearken unto his voice. When he says, trust in me, believe, and thou shalt be saved. 
Ask and it shall be given. He said, hearken unto my voice. And listen, sometimes God knows how we are. Amen. God knows sometimes that we just won't take that Bible and read it like we ought to. Oh, we get we got get sidetracked with the things that's going on in life. We get sidetracked with with the with the uh, with the other experiences, and and we just don't have the time. Why well, we've read it before, preacher? Why should I read it again? Well, you just never know. You just never know what God has to tell you that day if you're not in the Word of God. Can I say if you skip that one day, if you skip that moment, you may let miss out on the voice of the Lord. He may be saying to you something that you need to hear that will keep you from going through the valley of Mara. Amen? Listen now. Mara was not the end of their journey. It was, the only, it, was the only, it was only the beginning of their journey. See, sometimes we think, oh my, if I could just get through this trying time, if I could just get through this situation, oh, it'll all be over with. no. It's just the beginning. It's just the beginning. There's more times to come. That's why you need to learn at the first, on the first lesson, to trust in God and put your faith in Him and hearken diligently to His voice when He cries out. Sometimes I said, God knows how we are, but we won't open up His Word. So He sends the preachers. He sends the prophets. He sends the deacons. Your way to preach the word of God to arouse your soul and to tell you to listen to what God's trying to say. Because I'm going to tell you something. One of these days, the voice of the preachers are going to be silent. You won't hear them no more. It's only going to be between you and God and God's word. Oh, you better listen while you can hear. Then I go on and say, down in verse number 26. Bible says, number two, to, it says, and will do that which is right in his sight. I say, God can help us. God will heal us. God will touch us. God will take care of us if we do the right thing. And the first, the second thing we need to do after we diligently hearken to his voice. We need, to, we need to do what is right in his sight. We shouldn't have to go around questioning and wondering, is this right or wrong for me to do? We ought to get to the point where we know what's right and then do what's right. Amen. Stick to your guns. Stick to the word. Amen. Stick to your gut. Glory to God. And stick to your morals and your standards and do what's right. Then God will lend an ear. And then God will help us. He said, if my people, I said, which is called by my name. Amen. If my people will come and they'll confess their sins and do what's right. He said, I'll heal. I'll hear them and I'll heal them. That's what he said what he said. Now listen, we see number three in verse number 26. And we'll give ear to his commandments. Give ear to my commandments. God gives us the word. And within the word, God gives us instruction. Sometimes, sometimes God improves or enhances that instruction through the voice of the preacher, through the voice of the prophet, through the voice of his people. And we are to give ear. In other words, listen up now. Listen up. Can I say, there's a time to sleep later. There's a time to work later. There's a time to worry about your problems later. Now is the time to listen while you can hear what saith the word of God. And whenever God gives it to us, lend an ear to it. Not just lend an ear and just be hearers of the word, but become a doer of the word, which is number four. He says, and keep his statutes. 
I see here this morning that that is talking about his rule, his instruction. We live in a time period, we live in a land where man does not want to go by the rules anymore. Man don't want to go by the law anymore. Man wants to make up his own rules and laws that sees fit to him. I could not help it, and I don't mean to bring the world into this at this point, but let me say, I was this year, this holiday season, sitting and watching the bowl games and watching ball games and stuff, and the new commercial that's out by one in particular person, which I'm not going to call the name, has got this commercial out, and at the end of the commercial, it said, wouldn't it be great if there were no more humble beginnings? Can I say something? Ever, not everybody needs to be humble according to the Word of God. If you take away the humbleness, you take away God out of the equation, and pride will settle in. I'm just saying this morning. We need to follow the instructions of God that he has given us. Many keep tasting bitter waters because they choose to do so. You can change. I said, you can change. I was planning, Lord willing, God's worked this thing out for Dustin to be here tonight. But I was praying and thinking about Ecclesiastes chapter number 3. When there's a time and a season for everything. And God's got it worked out. But there's a conception thought that people think that our lives are already planned out. That we have no choice in the situation. That God already has it all worked out. We're all predestinated to live a certain way. Listen, I'm here to tell you, God gives man a choice to accept him or to reject him. God gives us a choice as a Christian that we can live right or we can live wrong. It's your choice whether you want to live by drinking the bitter waters of this life or change and quit drinking the bitter waters of this life. Amen. God's given us the sweetness of his holy word for us to quench our thirst. Why do we want to deny that? Let me, let me hurry on. He is the Lord that healeth thee. In Psalms 103, listen to the first three verses. The Bible says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Listen now. For it says, who forgiveth all thy iniquities? What a benefit. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities? Who healeth all thy Diseases. Let's read on. Who redeemeth thy life from destruction? Who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercy? Who satisfies thy mouth with good things so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles? What a blessing. What a benefit. God is the God of healing. He can touch our lives. He can touch our souls. He can even touch our mouths and give us the sweet savor of the Lord Jesus Christ. God heals all kind of sickness, the physical sickness that is detrimental and damaging to our lives. God can touch it. God can heal it. You say, preacher, I know God used to open the eyes of the blind. I know God used to straighten the legs of the crippled and the hands of the arthritis. I know that God used to raise the dead from the grave, but this is a different time. This is a different situation. See, we have got to where we accept blindness, crippleness, deafness, and all these other situations. We're, 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 we have inclined to accept diseases where we need to be accepting that God can heal and touch these things. I believe God can do it. Amen. Now, I, I haven't been following the Ethan story, but just a little bit by prayer and, and those of telling about his life. This young man was supposed to be dead, but he's at home. How many other times have we seen God 
intervene in the lives of people in which we are acquainted with that we know of that God has brought them through some of the some things that like they should have likely been dead, but yet they still live. God's still in the healing business. God can still touch. Amen. I'm not saying we're going to have a big healing service here at the church tonight. What I'm saying is, put your trust in God. Believe that God can do it, and God will touch our lives. Can I go on and say this morning that God can heal the sickness of mental sicknesses that causes us to doubt and not understand, clear understanding. We've accepted the fact when we see someone that has a, has a different mentality about them, that their minds just never developed and they can't speak words plainly. They can't uh, they can't uh, sing like other people. They can't hear like other people. They can't function like other people. That that's just the way it is in their life, and that's okay. Can I say today that God is able to touch the mind of all mankind? You've heard me talk about the story, and no doubt you've heard, heard the stories so much of our nephew Joshua, born with that Kabuki syndrome. This young man had heart surgery after heart surgery when he was just born. This young man was not guaranteed to live at all. This young man, they said he'll be dead all of his life. He'll not have the understanding that man has. He'll not be able to do what he does. What is amazing to me is Joshua can take a cell phone and FaceTime his mom and daddy when they're not at home and can sign language to them and tell them what he wants. And he's done it before. He signed to them and said, bring me some french fries home. You tell me God didn't touch something there? Oh, yeah, he still can't hear, but I guarantee you he can hear better than some people. Joshua heard enough that he wanted to accept Christ as his personal Savior. Now, by rights in our minds, because of his situation, God would have took care of him anyway. We believe that. But at the same time, Joshua had to draw on the Holy Spirit in his heart. He knew he had to pray and ask Jesus into his heart. Isn't it amazing? We have some people that's in the right mind that won't make that decision. They had rather live with the bitter water in their life. You get where I'm coming from this morning. Oh, I got to finish. But I understand that God can heal the sickness of sinful the simple sickness that can cause the heart not to function like Christians ought to be functioning. Oh, I understand this world is lost and dying and going to hell, but when the child of God will allow sin to interrupt their lives and cause hardness of their heart to where they cannot get along with all God's people, oh, they're still saved, they're still going to heaven, but yet they'll stay at home and not darken the doors of the church. Their hearts are hardened, and God will let their hearts get hardened and to the point to where God will let them die like that. Why? Why do we want to live like that? I say let God take care of the sickness. No matter what the sickness, no matter the problem, God heals sickness. I'm sure that you would like to get, go to the next year coming up in 2020. You'd love to go into it healed of all your problems, healed of all your situations. I'm telling you that God can't take care of it. We'll read another passage of scripture and I'm about done. In James chapter number 5, verse number 13, we know it well. It says, is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Is any married? Let him sing songs. Is any what, sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church. And let them pray over him, anointing him with the oil, with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick. And the Lord shall rise him up. And if he has committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. You know what that those three verses are saying? If you've got a situation in your life, no matter what it is, God can 
kill it. If you do what the Bible tells you to, and you call it. See, we, we like to use this verse, and, and it's by rights we can use this verse. If somebody's experiencing a health situation, hey, listen. We got oil in the pulpit that we can take it and put it on you and touch you and pray over you. And the faith of believing that God can do it will heal you. We understand that this morning. But at the same time, if you've got these other sicknesses, that oil may not be applied, but just the prayers of the faithful will lay their hands upon you and pray. It'll be taken care of. Even if there's sin in your life, God will take care of it. Now listen. I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to tell you this story and I'm going to close. Thought about this and thought about it in our journey down this morning. The most toured home in America, I'm going somewhere with this, the most toured home in America is the White House in Washington, D.C. They receive hundreds and hundreds of tourists every day that's going through the White House. Maybe you've been one of those lucky ones that have went through the White House. I've been there myself. I've went through the White House uh, as far as they would let you go. And it's an amazing thing. It's history. It's history. It's an amazing house. But the second most toured home, believe it or not, is a home that sits in Memphis, Tennessee at a place called Graceland. It's the home of Elvis Presley, the former king of rock and roll. The second most toured home in America. If you go to that home, you will cast your eyes upon the treasures that Elvis Presley was able to obtain in life. All of his albums, all of his cars, his wardrobe, all the furniture, everything that he was able to obtain. But if you walk out the back door the back gate at Graceland, go about 50 yards, you're going to come to a headstone. And on that headstone, you're going to see the place where Elvis Presley's body lies from an overdose of pills while he was going through depression. I'm not trying to say anything bad about this man. What I'm saying is Elvis Presley had it all. Money, Airplanes, cars, mansions. But if you were able to ask Elvis Presley one question as a reporter did one day, if there was anything more that he could ever want, what would it be? Elvis Presley made the statement and he said this, if I could give a million dollars for one day of peace, I would. How many of us are looking for a day of peace? We may not have all that he had. We may not be popular like the White House is. But we have problems and situations in our own life that we're needing peace from. I'm here to tell you, God can sweeten the waters of your life if you will only call upon his precious name. And seek his will. We'll have every head bowed and eye closed. And let us all stand to our feet if you would. Mr. Tammy, if you would take a moment and come to this piano.